Welcome to Deep Thought, Subconscious Sexual Orientations. Now, this is something, it's dealing with relationships, which I said I wouldn't deal with too much on um, this channel, but this is something real deep. It's, it, it's a subconscious matter. That's why I call them subconscious sexual orientations. Now, this is way deeper than heterosexual, straight, queer, or whatever the heck else they got out here. This is deeper. This is something that you, a person can be trained to spot this in other people and even in themselves, but it's not something that's talked about in the general public. Now, some people who follow me, maybe on my private site, know I've done something on this, so they'll just nod their head, you know, nod their heads and like, oh, okay, well, I'm deciding to let them know. But subconscious sexual orientations are very important because it affects everything. And in fact, as I go in this conversation, you'll understand why a lot of what's taught in um, relationship, um, I'll say solving relationship issues are doomed to failure because a lot of it doesn't get down to a subconscious factor. And this is just one subconscious factor. I can, I'm actually learning. I'm actually in the process of uh, learning some things now that take things even deeper. But I'm not in. Um, um, I have to complete this particular course I'm taking. Right. So anyway. Right. To understand the subconscious sexual orientation is just to understand one reality. There are two sexual drives in the human being. Two. One is the carnal drive, which, you know, everybody knows about that. Everybody knows about that, and, and some people think that's the only sex drive. But another drive is to connect with someone on a spiritual basis. See, it's a, it's a thing. See, in this culture, we do a lot on um, the carnal side. You know, we want that person to look good and all of that. But how many people really like to connect with somebody on a spiritual thing? I mean, in most cases in this culture... And all over the world, that person is usually like a great friend of the opposite sex or, you know, even the same sex sometimes. But that's still a connection. You know, the person you can just talk to, you just feel a connection to them. Right. Now, both of these drives, as I said, are subconscious. Right. Wait, hold on a second. Sorry about that. But both these drives are... Um, there's two, those, those drives are uh, very subconscious in nature. Because of this uh, subconscious nature, well, let me, before I go any further, all human beings have both of those drives. They have the carnal drive, but they also have the spiritual drive. But what has happened in society is that certain forces have divided up how people express that. So people might have one that they express, but they suppress the other one. Now, there are very, 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 very few people who are both, who express both equally. Very few people, because one is hard to do. Now, just to be clear, it's not like somebody is totally one direction and, you know, totally suppresses the other. Say somebody, like in an extreme case, somebody might have, they might express 80% of one of the drives, but only 20%. The average person probably exhibits maybe 60% of one drive and then 40% of the other. So, you know, as we categorize them, we're categorizing them according to which one is most prevalent. Now, the sex drives have have terms, and it's these terms are hard to find. If you do find it, it's usually going to be in reference to something I've written or something by uh, Master Yao and Yamache Morris, where I first learned about it. Interestingly enough, he doesn't talk about it as much, but then he got a lot of information. But the two drives create two classes of people. Now, the people who express more the carnal sex drive, those are referred to as sensual bohemians. The, their sex drive is more focused on materialism, more focused on their bodies, more focused on being outgoing, more focused on physical gratification. That's the bohemian. To the point now, like I said, the average person, their drive might be, 
you know, they might be 60% bohemian, then uh, 40% of the other one. It's a problem if somebody is 70 to 80 or more percent bohemian. Those are extreme. Those are the people, those are the Nola darlings of the world who are having sex with everybody. Don't have anything, don't have any real breaks on it. Right? But it's about physical gratification because of what they, how they put it. Right? So that's one drive. The other drive is the more spiritual type of drive where someone suppresses the carnal but emphasizes more the emotional and more the companionship thing. You know, that's the intelligentsian, reverent intelligentsian. Their sex drive, let's, in a simple way of looking at it, the sensual bohemian, their sex drive is more in their genitals. The reverent intelligence and their sex drive is more in their head. Like the intelligence, and that's the person that intellectualizes sex. Intellectual, intellectualizes getting with people. Indeed, in um, the dating coach industry, which technically I'm not a part of, but, you know, or people, men who will pay lots of money to learn, quote unquote, game. It's almost always intelligence. The room it will be overwhelmingly intelligentian. You know, you might have a bohemian sprinkle here and there who just need a few tweaks, but for the most part, it's people looking, it's men looking for a way to intellectualize, they, to get a woman intellectually. Like these are the type of guys who will say, look for a step by step type of thing, right? But, you know, this, is, this isn't about that. That's just an example. Now, what creates the uh, bohemian and intelligentsian? Well, the intelligentsian first, right? The thing that creates it is somewhere along the line, they developed a fear about their sexual expression. Now, truthfully, people are born towards, when they're born, they have an inclination towards one or the other, but that inclination is reinforced by whatever environment they grew up in. Now, the key thing with the intelligentsian is they have a subconscious fear. Maybe not if you talk to an intelligent, they'll say, no, nah, I ain't scared of sex or anything like that. But then you talk to them long enough, they'll say, but, you know, because of how I grew up, my religion and everything. And, you know, they said sex was wrong and everything. See, people don't realize that. See, the thing that uh, creates it primarily is religion. Any religion that demonizes sex or sex outside of marriage. If you if you take a child and you relentlessly hit them with that, if they feel like sex is wrong or any way, the shoot, they're gonna grow up into an adult that will have trouble letting go, even in marriage. Now that's why a lot of uh, marriages are jacked up. Now just to be clear, that don't mean they not gonna have sex, but they're gonna have a lot of stipulations as to who they're gonna have sex with and the uh, circumstance. Now, the only, only real issue with that, like some extreme bohemians, like you can't really suppress a sex drive like that, the carnal drive. It'll come out in weird ways. Like I would never have uh, someone, if I, see, if I met someone like as a potential babysitter for my children or my sons, especially when they were younger, and they impressed me as being an extreme bohemian, I'd be like, you know what, that's all right. Because the shit does come out. The shit just comes, it just comes out in weird ways. Right? But the main issue there is fear. Now, primarily from religion, but it could be from something else. You know, it could be from molestation. It could be uh, just from, um, I don't know, it, it could be anything. Just a parent, not even a religious one, but just scaring them. Like you have some mothers who might have had a baby too early. And I've seen these cases. They will literally, even if they're not religious, scare they try to scare their daughters into not doing the same thing. But... You know, the proper way to do that is to, uh, you know, just tell them how to engage in it correctly and just tell them how to make good decisions, but not scare them. But that thing becomes subconscious to the point people don't even realize it, right? And in fact, uh, well, I'll get into that later. Um, so that's, that's the intelligentsia. That's the intelligentsia. The bohemian, on the other hand, didn't come from that type of environment. Even if they grew up in a uh, church environment, depending on how their parents enforced it. 
like personally i grew up in an environment um you know mother was very like she she read the bible inside and out very religious family but somebody neglected to tell me sex was wrong or that i would burn you know like it was an evil thing somebody neglected to tell me that so you know and plus another factor with uh, the bohemians i'll get into in a second so bohemians they just don't have any control no fear you know it was like they like a bull in the china shop when it's you know they go for gratification even if it could cause problems you know that's the person who might sleep with that's the woman who might sleep with her sister's husband just because he looked good to a smile that'll right. Even if her sister's in the next room. If she can get away with it. You know, that's the dude who, you know what? He, he going to stroke somebody on his job even though he, can know, he, he knows he could lose a job. And I've actually known some players like that. They've gotten in trouble on jobs. Not even for sexual harassment, but just being caught in a storage room or something. See, that bohemian, he, he, that bohemian he or she does not have any breaks. Now, you know, when I talk about, just real quick, people who are familiar with uh, my categorizations of men, right? The men I can't label as gamesmen who are kind of like the thirsty type of dudes and Mr. Goodbar are always bohemian. There are really no intelligence in good bars. That was the main thing because they're going to be outgoing. They're going for physical gratification. They figured out how to get it. That's it. It's a mindset thing. It's subconscious, right? Whereas, like, more successful men, the mass men, the guys who, like, got a lot of money and status, they bon- they're they intelligentsia because they're looking at it a different way. The only thing, they're the mass men, they select, but they select because of their status and everything. And, you know, they mimicking Mr. Goodbar, but on a deep subconscious level, they not Mr. Goodbar. And then the nice guys, the biggest issue with the nice guys ain't really their niceness. is that they have breaks on their natural sex drive. And indeed, you know, getting back to that dating coach thing again, really, if, uh, you know, I get a lot of dudes who are actually bohemian and stuff. Their biggest issue is they want they just want some sexual discipline and how to manage multiple women. Which, I, that's a lot of my coaching business, right? But with the nice guys, the biggest issue with the nice guys is to get them over their fears. It's always a fear. If I talk with any nice guy, there's always some, if I, all I do is talk with them long enough, there's some subconscious fear. Because that fear thing, it, it affects everything. Now, it's interesting, even going beyond relationships, it colors how they interact in the rest of life. Now, for example, with uh, there's a class thing with the Bohemians and the Intelligentians. Bohemians tend to be from either very poor backgrounds or very rich backgrounds, whereas Intelligentians tend to be from more solidly middle class backgrounds. Now, there are exceptions. There's going to be definite exceptions because you can get somebody who is an extremely poor environment, but you know, they're in the church all the time. You know, you go in a hood or something, you, you want to find the church, look for, look for the liquor store, look for the tattoo shop, the barber shop, and there's probably a church on the corner there. So you can have somebody born in a poor neighborhood and also, you know, of course, in rich neighborhoods, right? And then the reason why I say the class thing is there, the reason why, because... In a poor environment, there are no breaks on what what someone to do. If anybody who's been in the hood, people go for their physical gratification. They, they don't have any breaks on it. A lot of times, that's why a lot of people stay there. That's why sometimes in a very poor environment, it's literally like a jungle. It's survival of the fittest, you know. So you got people thinking on themselves and everything. You know, there's no breaks. There's no decorum in some extremely poor neighborhood. That's why a lot of times if I find somebody and they got a real high sexual nature, I always ask where they uh, come from. And that that goes across races and everything. I remember I knew this uh, white young lady, right? Um, I could tell how she how she carried herself. I was like, I mean, she made some of herself. I think she a federal agent or something now. But when I first met her, I was like, yeah, where did you grow up in? (laughs) You know, and she definitely grew up in a trailer park. But. 
their sex drive is going to be more open because there was nothing to put any brakes on it. And the same thing, now I say very poor, but also very rich. If you're around, if someone grows up in an environment where all their monetary needs are met, all their material needs are met, you know, they don't have to worry. Uh, and you know what? They don't have to worry about, uh, you know, the lights getting cut off. You know, they got parents and stuff who basically spoil them. That's why you get some cases of some rapists and stuff, and they from a high background, you know. Because you got I mean, I remember I read a story about a lot of rapes occurring at this Ivy League college. And these, these are upper-class white men. Because they don't have any breaks on their sex drive. Nothing, nothing because they don't have any breaks in uh, life, anything to slow them down. Nothing to prevent them from doing whatever the fuck they want to do. See, when you have that mentality, like in a poor neighborhood... You know, in a rich neighborhood, they'll call it just living, you know, just living life. Maybe even being spoiled. In a poor neighborhood, they'll call it you live only once. And, you know, don't give a fuck. You're just going to go for it, right? Now, those are going to tend to be bohemian tendency, right? The, intel, middle, the intelligence has come from a more middle class thing. Because, one, there's a certain limit on how high you're going to go. But then, at the same time, you're not going to be just down in the gutter. So with a child raised in an environment, he's going to be aware of limitations. And this is even if they're not religious. There's going to be certain limitations on behavior. In order to live a stable life, you have to have some level of discipline. And so a child growing up in that environment, he's going to have a tendency to put some brakes on how he do things. Like I said, there are still some exceptions, but there's still going to be some brakes on it, right? Now, because of that, because of the class thing, that affects politics. Intelligentsia types tend to be more, um, tend to have a tendency to be more conservative. And that don't have anything to do with which political party they vote for. You know, there's a lot of uh, conservatives who are Democrat. You know, indeed, the black community as a whole is socially conservative, but it votes overwhelmingly Democratic. So when you look at how someone votes, you can't look at it as a term of party, but interest. So the intelligentsians, they if you if you watch how they vote, they'll tend to vote for more socially and otherwise conservative, uh, socially conservative uh, uh, matters. You know, because it, hey, more stability is going to be in it. They're going to have more controls. They're not going to just let go. But then that's why you have the very rich who have a tendency to be very liberal and just let things go. Just be like, hey, whatever. One, because it's not really affecting them. Or, you know, the very poor, as you know, they can actually have a vested interest in changing shit and changing the social order. Or, be honest, a lot of them don't even respect the social order. And then, also, uh, you know, that affects what type of religion they might choose. You know, that's, a, that's another factor. See, all of those factors, remember the uh, podcast I did on... Uh, holistic thinking if you want to look at someone you have to look at all angles of them you have to yeah you got to look at their religion what religion what religion they going to gravitate towards like for example tantra tantra is more of a spiritual thing what i found with tantra the people who gravitate to it and even stuff like open relationships and stuff they a strong tendency to be bohemian a strong tendency, something like polyamory or something. Strong tendency to be bohemian. Because they want they want the freedom to indulge uh, whatever they, you know, the gratification. That's what it comes down to. People can put all this other stuff in, but it comes down to gratification. So it's going to affect, it's going to affect what political causes they, they support, how they look at religion, their class, even the way they might choose to live, you know. It's going to affect something, how they wear their hairstyles, how they wear their clothes. Because one of the things, the clothes things is deep. Because that's one of the ways you can tell, have a general idea which is which. Right? For example, someone who's bohemian will tend to wear clothes that will show off their body as much as possible. They will wear, like, I'll use myself for an example. I'm definitely bohemian. 
almost like to a dysfunctional, well, was to a dysfunctional degree in my life, right? Early in life. I got more discipline now, but that came with age. But I'm very comfortable wearing stuff that show off my muscles, like extremely. Like, so, and then a woman, that's the type of woman, a woman that, that's the type of woman, she, she walked down the street with some leggings on and stuff. <laughs> leggings showing her ass. Those are the type of women, they, they have no problem wearing, like, some four-inch heels and a miniskirt. Very comfortable with their body, very comfortable with, with their looks, right? Now, they wear, a uh, bohemian wears their clothes to draw attention to them physically. That's the key. And in, physically and in a sexual manner. Like when you, a bohemian typically, if you let them wear the clothes that they want to wear, and it doesn't have to do with a job or a uniform, they, they, they want to wear that. And sometimes even if they working on a job where they have to wear a uniform, like especially the women, they still might try to get away with that top button or something or some tight type of clothes to give you an idea. The intelligentsian, they're going to wear their clothes in such a way. Well, let me say something else about the bohemian. The bohemian is more likely to be tattooed. Because what does it do? It draws attention to them. You know? Bohemian is more likely, even though there's the whole beard trend. And this is easier to tell in um, the white community. I can usually look at facial hair and get an idea about a white person's um, uh, class background. You know, and it's a lot. Of, it's a lot of stuff too. It it is an interest. It's an interesting dynamic because an extreme bohemian can look, yeah, I hate to put it like they're trash, especially the women. Extreme, right? Now the intelligentsian, you can pick them out because they could have a killer body. You know, they can have a killer body. You know, coke bottle figure or real muscular. But you'll probably never know it. They wear their clothes to deflect attention from themselves in a physical way. And in fact, uh, especially the women, they can get offended if you see them in a sexual way. Because one thing about the intelligentsian, they want you to see them for their heads, for their minds. They really get mad if you see them just in a physical thing. Like if you have an, meet an intelligentsian, if you can gaze at the intelligentsian, praise them for what they have going on mentally. Trust me. Don't don't be don't lead with oh you're so beautiful and you have a killer body yeah they might try to charge you with something but if you can gauge that person's intelligence and you say oh yeah you like comic books too or something like that drives them crazy All right but those things uh and trust me this oh man this is something I could do a major seminar on because it's so deep it's so deep because it, like I said even when I talked about the class thing. The uh, bohemians will tend to be, they still will tend to be on the poor side. You know, now you get some, you get some who can make it to a um, high thing because there's other things. One thing about bohemians, if they can focus their energy just, if they, the more they focus their energy, they can actually more likely be rich because they'll hustle. They'll do whatever, you know. Oprah Winfrey, uh, my mentor, defied, my mentor described her uh is being bohemian. Also Martin Luther King. Because if you look at Martin Luther King's private life, um, he wasn't a loyal person. He was out there. In fact, I know from some insiders, shoot, he didn't really even want to be bothered with the um, civil rights movement at first. He wanted to chase some women. And there's a lot of there's a lot of insiders know that, but you know, he still did some great things. If you can focus a bohemian, they can do something. But then the average one on the street, they're gonna live an average life. If at best. But they're going to be the type want to party more and all of that. And then you got the, uh, you know, more than, well, one problem with the intelligentsia. And they, they tend to stay put because of that underlying fear. A lot of times they don't go for it. They, you, it's going to be, a lot of times they're not going to be the entrepreneurial type. You know, even if they get in business, it'll be kind of a safe type of business. They ain't going like, to like to take a lot of chances. You know, because that, like I said, that sex drive affects everything, right? Um, you know what? Let me know if y'all want me to get deeper into that subject. Because like I said, there are so many nuances to it. I'm, I'm still learning the nuances. I knew, knew this information for 20 years, and it's still little nuances, you know? 
I mean, at this point, I could say I'm an expert at spotting who is who. Even when they hide it, because you get one thing, like I knew this one young lady, she was definitely bohemian, self-admitted. I mean, it took, because I knew her, when I knew I was married, I, it was hard being a, alone with her, you know. But she, if you look at her from the outside, she dressed conservatively, but if you around her, she get comfortable all of a sudden. It's a weird thing, it's always you can get some idea, like a bohemian woman who has enough discipline to like dress more conservatively. That was the type you find out they got like a lace bra under there or they wearing some thongs, if they even wearing underwear. <laughs> that's that's the irony of it. That, it, it. Like I say, there's a lot of little nuances to it. But anyway, this is getting a little long. So anyway, just think on this. Peace and blessings. <laughs>